What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell for me so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you're one up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is going to give you up to 12 free stocks once you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put at least one penny in that brokerage account. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks valued up to $30,600. So after the video, I want you guys to go down to the description box of the video. Click on that Weeble link, open up your new account today, go get that free stock, go get that free money. So when we look at the CPI numbers, we have to go back one year. And that would be July, 2021. And then we fast forward one year to July, 2022 and that 8.5% CPI number represents the increase in prices of our goods and services we use over the last 12 months, right? So a gallon of milk this year is more expensive than it was last year. And that is what CPI really gives us. It really gives us an accurate indication of inflation. And right now, that is not good, but it is better than it was last month. So when we looked at June 2022 CPI numbers, right? When we look at the last 12 months, it was 9.1%. So now in July, it's 8.2%. So that's good news. That means year over year inflation is coming down. Now, guys, I'm no expert. I'm no economist. I'm not trying to tell you guys I know everything about inflation because I don't. I like to kind of give you guys my perspective on what's happening in our economy because it does affect what happens in our stock market, which that's one of our asset classes we use to build wealth. So if we kind of got an understanding of what's going on in the economy and how that uh, is indirectly inf affecting the stock market, then that gives us some information we can use to be smart investors. Now, our economy and our stock market are two different things, right? Right? They're two different things. But I believe indirectly they are connected. And the reason I say that is because both of them have two things in common. They have consumers like you and I, and they have companies, right? Right? As consumers, we drive our economy because 70% of our economy is made up of consumer spending. People like you and I taking our hard-earned money and buying things, right? Who are we spending that money with? Companies. We are spending that money with companies. Let's look at our stock market. What is our stock market made up of? Companies. What do we do as consumers if we want to invest in the stock market? We take our hard-earned money and we invest in companies, right? And the reason we invest in those companies is because we want to grow our wealth. If I take my hard-earned money and I invest in Apple today, present-day money, my hope and my goal is that Apple will grow in value five, 10, 15 years from now. So the money that I put in Apple, present day money, will grow along with Apple, which does what for me as a consumer, as a investor, it increases my net worth, right? So in my opinion, the economy and the stock market are indirectly connected because of consumers and companies. What do the CPI numbers that came out today tell us about our economy? Well, one, it tells us we're still spending too much money. 
right? We're spending at a rate that is just not going to be able to be sustainable. It also tells us that what we're spending our money on is going up sharply in price, right? Food, gas, right? Housing. Those are really the three big things we want to look at when we're thinking about inflation. Also, what we want to look at is where should inflation be in order for us to have a healthy economy? Well, inflation really should be between two and two and a half percent for us to have a really healthy, vibrant economy. What's going to hurt people in the environment we're in now with inflation being at eight and a half percent is that the money that you make, whether it be from an employer, whether it be from your company, in order for that money to hold its purchasing power, you have to be earning money at a higher rate than inflation is. And most people right now aren't doing that because inflation is eight and a half percent per the July 2022 CPI numbers. So if my money that I have invested, right, is not earning at least the eight and a half percent return or the money that I'm making from my company or from my employer, if I'm not getting at least the eight and a half percent raise, then really the money I have over here, whether it be passive income or active is income, is going to be losing its purchasing power since the goods and services that I use that money to purchase are increasing in prices at a tune of eight and a half percent year over year. Right. All I'm trying to tell you guys is we're not out of the woods. Right. We need to be between two and two and a half percent inflation. It's going to take us a while to get there. So the Federal Reserve. Right. What do they do to try and help, you know, decrease inflation? Well, they raise interest rates when it's hard for us to borrow money cheaply, guys. We tend to not borrow it. And when, when we don't borrow money, we tend to not buy things. See, in our country, a lot of the consumer spending we do is borrowed money. Now, a lot of us do make good money from our incomes. A lot of us make good money from our investments, but we still, still spend that money. That's why 100 million people in our country don't have any retirement savings. That's why over 60% of the people live paycheck to paycheck because we make money and we borrow money, but we spend it all. And that's one of the reasons why our economy is hurting right now from an inflation standpoint is because of that overspending. We have to be careful with not investing during these volatile times. Right now, the stock market looks pretty dang on good right? Stock market's up today, right? Why? Because they got good news. Inflation has peaked. It's coming down. So that's good news. So you look at the three major indexes, they're actually rallying, right? As investors, if you have been dollar cost averaging in over the last three or four months, like I've been asking you guys to do on the videos, you should see a bump or a bounce in your portfolio right now. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods because we're not. We got a long ways to go and we'll still see more sell-offs in the stock market when bad news comes in. But the good news for us is institutional investors have to make money. And the primary way they make money uh, is in the stock market, right? And any good news for them, they're going to be buying positions back in the stock market. Bad news they have the ability to sell off those positions, which drives down the stock market. But that's OK, because we're long term investors. What we should be concerned about is picking our favorite companies, favorite ETFs, favorite cryptos. We don't need 15 or 20 of them. You need two to three strong, solid, historically performing positions. S&P 500, in my opinion, should be one of them or total stock market ETF should be one of them. You should be in the broader based stock market if you're trying to build wealth. I think that's a great place to be because you don't have to be the expert. The work is already done for you. You got the top 500 companies in America if you're in the S&P 500 and you probably got the top 30 to 3,500 companies if you're in the total stock market. Why try to be the expert? Work's already done. 
You just got to be consistent enough to put money in every single week, every single month and have a long term outlook and watch it grow. So that's the number one investment, in my opinion, you should think about having if you're going to be invested in the stock market is that broad based stock market ETF. And then from there, guys, you got to think about core sector ETFs. You got to think about the, 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 the industries in this country, energy, tech, real estate, consumer discretionary, healthcare, right? You got to think about these industries and decide, you know, which of these industries do I believe have a, the best chance to help me build wealth long term? For me personally, I like the tech industry. So what do I do with 30% of my money? I put it in the tech, tech ETF. And I like Vanguard Information Technology VGT. That's the one I like. That's the one I put money in when I want to invest in the, the, the broader tech market, right? So you got to think about that. And then you want to think about, okay, some individual stocks, maybe 20% individual stocks and cryptos. So let's, let's recap, 50%. Broad-based stock market ETF, S&P or total stock market, 30% in a core sector ETF. I like tech because I believe tech's the future. And then I take the last 20% of my dollar and I put it in individual stocks like financial services companies, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, because I'm an old banker, right? Retired banker. So I like financial services companies. You may like something else. And then I take some of that money and I put it in crypto. And that's it, man. You see, I got three to four investments. That's all I got. And I've done extremely well using that investing strategy. So you guys may want to think about that. But nevertheless, inflation is peaked. I think it's on its way down. I think we got to continue investing. We can't be worried about all this noise we hear, all these people talking about this and talking about that and, and putting fear in us and scaring us. Uh -uh. We just got to know our plan and continue to execute it, guys. You do that, man. You're going to build wealth and you're going to get to your financial freedom. That's my opinion. I believe that because I did it, right? I'm no expert at anything. I just had a plan, executed it, and just kept earning, right? And kept my expenses low. So guys, drop me some comments and let me know what you think about the July 2022 CPI numbers. And do you believe that's a positive sign? I believe it's a positive sign because I believe inflation has peaked and it's on its way down. If you want up to 12 free stocks, click on that Weeble link down in the description box of the video. Hey man, go get that free stock, go get that free money. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, smash the like button. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness, never stop believing in yourself, and I'm gonna catch you on the next video. Peace. Today's video is sponsored by my company, RF Financial Consulting. And in my company, I work with individuals just like you through financial mentoring and coaching sessions. And in those one hour sessions, we talk about strategies to help you get to your financial freedom, whether it be through real estate investing, stock market investing, creating additional streams of income, credit card arbitrage, or starting and growing a business. If that's something that you might be interested in, there's an email address in the description box of the video. Send me an email and let's discuss if I'm the right fit for you.